Lion Act is if you've got a company that is into sponsorship or is interested in entertaining some of your clients, your family or your friends, certainly a lot better than a night at the local Chinese restaurant, a lot more eventful. You can network here at the fights, some great people. Certainly worth a, a think or two about if you're looking to entertain guests corporately. Most promoters nowadays up be putting on the free course meal, a beverage or two with it, and a great night is had by all. The only place being better than at ringside, Andy, is watching home on Fox Sports. If you're watching Matt Paul, you'd have to be happy with his work in the first round. Boxing nicely, using his footwork, manning his combinations and getting out. But keep working there, don't hang in there, keep working. Keep his arms free, keep him free. Said how durable Matt Pawley is. So yeah, one guy who is durable is that John Wayne Parr, former national middleweight champion. In fact, two times Australian hit, boxing hit, champion. Unbelievable as a kickboxer or an exponent of Muay Thai is expanding his resume. He is headed inside the cage with our very best and a heavyweight in Tony the Gun Vanello. Early February out at Panthers at the World of Entertainment, JWP Tony Vanello. It's king of the cage time. There's some good work on the inside here, but I have to say, Andy, from personal experience, I've been in a Tony Bonello rear naked chokehold, and if you get in there, there's no way out. I'm sorry. Yeah. So Wayne Parr, I get hope he knows free, what he's doing. Free. Get free. Watch those heads when you're getting close. That was a nice left hook there from, from Milner. Speaking of big dates, Rick. is there any bigger in Watch the foreseeable it, future? We've spoken about February 4, we've spoken about John Wayne Parr. What about March 7 at the Sydney Entertainment Centre? Fox Sports, pubs and clubs and main event TV for the vacant WBA super middleweight title. Sam the King Solomon and Anthony the Man Mundine. Tickets are still available. On keep the working, undercard, on, Solomon Amono returns. Get John Hopawati. The headline act. It is Mundine Solomon 2. As we see some blood dripping down the right hand side of the face of Matt Pawley. It has happened again. Phil Cropper goes straight for the Vaseline. Break! Don't punch. Break clean. Break clean. Step back. Unless they break, you've got to step back. Box. There's been a lot of work for both men on the inside and, and Paulie's been cut again and that's, that's the problem. Once you get a big cut, it tends to open up every single time. Final seconds, there goes the bell. End of round number two, let's go in with Matt Paulie. That's Phil Cropper heading in to attend to the cut. Okay, one of you guys have got to get out. Okay, seconds out. Come on. Seconds out. Getting you as close to the action as you possibly can get without taking a punch yourself right here on Fox Pubs and Clubs and Main Event TV. I guess after seeing what we just saw in the corner, I'd like to thank all our trainers around Australia that continue to allow us into their corner, into their personal space and their private space for the benefit of the sport and the benefit of the viewers at home and the promotion of boxing times like that i would imagine tending to, to matt paulie there'd, there'd be disappointment in the corner because matt's been cut again you really want time to yourself that was a nice right hand there from matt paulie and he's trying to fight milner off and there's no uh, secret what milner's trying to do here he's trying to land as many punches as he can on that cut he wants to really open it up Yes. 
Nice little straight left hand from Matt Pawley in the middle of all that. Milner stalking Pawley. You can see Pawley's aware of it. He's, he's really using his football. He wants to stay out of range. Need his punches and get out of there. He knows that he can't take punches on that cut. Good upper body movement as Pawley. It was a good right hook to the body. Catching Milner as he's coming in. Oh, was a oh, nice straight Paulie right. Was stunned there. Coffee, that was a coffee. good straight right hand coffee. from Brad Milner. Now, is that going to slow Pawley down? Because defensively, he'd been very much on the move. The gloves had been high for the majority. Now, Milner's trying to trap Pawley in corners now. Pawley got hit twice there. Don't hang in there. Don't hang in there. Nice Watch lump underneath the right eye of Pauly too. They'll take the bumps, the lumps and the bruises. What they don't need is another cut. Out of the trenches, Brad. Come on. When it's a bump like uh, Adam Wills is, Andy, uh, there is a problem. <laughs> Pushing right hand almost appeared from Matt Pauly there. Just caught Brad Milner off guard, off balance. That was a nice left hook there from Milner. He's very aggressive now. He knows what he wants to do. Another early March date, I believe, is Robbie Peaton and Randy Ganoy. It's subject to confirmation at the moment, but it is in the plans. Paul is leaning some nice punches from a distance, but he's still under pressure. He's just not getting away with this fight. Break. Round three. Right hand lead, right hook. Yeah? Come back with a knee hook. Yeah. How are you feeling? You heard him with that straight right hand. Come on, come on up. Right hand, come up with a right uppercut. Then left hook, yeah? Bring up that uppercut, right uppercut. He's tapping his head here. Bring it up, left hook, right hand over the top. Have a look at some of the action from the last round. Here's the straight right hand. Paulie got caught with it, and I think the fact he was caught very easily by it is cause for optimism for Brad Milner and the crew working out of the red corner. Six by three minute rounds. Once again, we're at junior welterweight, a weight limit of 63.5 kilograms, or in the old language, just 10 stone. Volume of punches there from Paulie. Good hit and turn there from Matt Paulie. Got out of the way, did he? Got his work done and moved. Milner's just stalking him at this stage. He's not throwing a lot, but he's just coming forward, coming forward, just waiting for that opportunity, that door open. Paulie's conscious of that. He wants to get his hands back as far as he, as soon as he throws those punches, get it back into defensive position. On both, On both. Matt Paulie, the left hand boxer, back against the ropes now, turning. And he's just boxing nicely this he stage, making him nicely, nicely. using his feet and. Maybe Brad Milner's just getting a little bit tired. He's, he's done a lot of a lot of chasing. Done a lot of chasing, and no doubt frustration levels are starting to set in too. Paulie has been very evasive defensively. And clever Brad, offensively. Do it all. Do it all. Okay. Oh, Brad, you okay? Wait, wait, you wait. Okay, keep it up. Okay, box. And that's a sign of tiredness, Andy. The punches start becoming a little bit more wild and not on target. If anyone who's done a little bit of boxing and just punching the bag, it's not your legs that get tired first, it's your arms. Nice left hook there from Brad Milner. Again, again. 
moves. Nice two punch combination from Paulie. This is where he gets himself into trouble, though. Staying in for the war. They've been working even harder on that technique of one, two, throw your combination and move. And when you move, move quickly. Re-establish.